Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. In this video I want to show you comics by two cartoonists with a background in fine arts. So yeah, if you're not as much into pretentious stuff as I am, please feel free to end the video right now. But since you obviously choose to continue, here's the deal. I got a stack of books by Frédéric Cochet and by Gareth Brooks. One from France, the other from Great Britain. All the books that I show you are either English translations or silent comics, or at least almost silent comics, and still easily available, I guess. Frédéric Cochet's most recent book, L'Homme Armé, The Armed Man, is unfortunately very timely, and yet timeless as well. Dealing with mankind's infatuation with all kinds of warfare and aggression. The Pink Hulk has a lot of bad temper, but is not the man in arms, obviously. He gets along pretty well with the little birdies, but not so much with the different folks who hit him, stab him, and shoot him with a huge arsenal of weaponry from medieval lances to cruise missiles. We follow him on his ordeal down into the bowels of the earth, then meeting some scientist with a telescope and see him ending up high on a strange tower to the feet of the three sisters of fate, or whoever these ladies are. It's definitely a strange kind of tale, very ambiguous, surreal and open for interpretation. The blend of engravings, paintings, collages referring to all kinds of sources from Renaissance paintings to Marvel comics is visually striking and intense. As it is actually a very appropriate way to depict man's path to self-destruction with visual metaphors. Cochet resists the temptation to try to shock us with gore and horror. And quite frankly, how could he compete with the horrors perpetrated by, for an instance, Mr. Putin and his minions each day right now? But in transcending it into a visual song, a very well-crafted metaphor, it's even more melancholic and sadder in my opinion but still leaving a tiny bit of hope despite all the hopelessness. Hortus Sanitatis is similar in tone and atmosphere, and the reference to fine art etchings is obvious, most notably to those by James Enser, but a slew of even older masters from the Baroque and the Renaissance as well, and the medieval age, since he picks up the old theme of the, the Totentanz, the Dance of the Dead, in a very unique way. The death here in the story is sometimes very relaxed, at least on some pages, and very cool in a way. And there's a second theme opposed, the theme of life and fertility, impersonated by a pregnant woman, and later on by a phallic tree who grows into the sky until the story ends with a picture that obviously can be seen in two very different ways. Cochet plays here with the means of ambiguity very successfully. His method of choice are these engravings who show ghost-like former attempts to depict the same scene in slightly different manners, adding to the atmosphere of the images. The book has a price tag of 18 euros, which is quite hefty for only 48 pages, but the reproductions are superb, the paper is excellent, so I actually can't argue with it. It's really a piece of art. Speaking of art, Hick Sunt Leones is a hybrid between comic and art catalogue. Obviously a sequence of pictures, or rather paintings, with text. Painted in a raw, deliberately sloppy manner. Pictures and texts are quoting lots of sources. 
some paintings by Rembrandt amongst them and poems and stuff. But I actually can't get into this book. Hicksunt Leones, Here Are the Lions. Wikipedia tells me that this was written on ancient maps to mark the unknown territories outside the civilized world. Yeah, okay, and now? Somehow this represents exactly the kind of art that had driven me from the world of fine arts and museums into the bosom of comics once upon a time. Much more up my alley is this little book here, La Mort du Roi, The Death of the King, a nicely made charming collection of little engravings, part-wise very minimalistic. The title of these often works as a kind of punchline, like Orders always come from on high, or the revolution, with these three dudes there, or in a room at the Swastikan. The same kind of witty and dry humor, and most and foremost, the same level of artistic cleverness can be found in the works of Gareth Brooks. Carsten Gruber of Living the Line praised this book enthusiastically in a great video, and I can wholeheartedly second each point he makes about The Dancing Plague, published by Self Made Hero. The similarities to Frederic Cochet's work are obvious. The very productive appropriation of an old art style the death theme, and even more, the Totentanz, death and dance. It's all here as well, but in a much more coherent actual story, basing on different reports of supposedly actual events. These reports state an outbreak of a dancing plague somewhere around 1500. People start to dance compulsively and for no particular reason. And this behavior was infectious. So it became a kind of mass phenomenon. If this was the reason for this was food poisoning, a strange kind of mental illness or mass hysteria, we only can guess. Like centuries later, people had difficulties to understand the hysteria of Beatles fans, for an example. But this book doesn't draw this too easy conclusion. And I like that. Instead, it puts us into the medieval mindset, speaks to us in long gone pictures, symbols and metaphors that are still easily under to understand. Even though their belief system their concepts of the world are so different, we can't deny an eerie familiarity with this medieval condition of being thrown into a world nobody comprehends. An important reason why this book is so successful is obviously the art, which mimics quite virtuously the seemingly primitivistic medieval art. Gareth Brooks uses embroidering and pyrography or is it pronounced pyrography? I don't know. To create his art, both to fantastic effects and especially the letter. The drawing by Burning is obviously very meaningful in terms of the story as well. A story about a time that was obsessed with cleansing by fire. My very first encounter with Gareth Brooks was actually with this anthology number 27 by Kush that was devoted thematically to best friends forever. I don't know if and how Brooks' story really fits that theme, but his contribution, the entangled encounter of a man and a woman in a short disillusioning, dry and quite unromantic yet impactful way was one of the best in that anthology. And here I have The Black Project as well, another one that Carsten Gruber raved about. Since I haven't read that one yet, I only can tell you that this is about a guy who makes his own sex dolls. 
Mm, actually, I was not too fond of the premise. It really seems creepy to a degree. But then I saw a used copy for a steal and could not resist. And I'm pretty sure this turns out to be a heck of a book as well. For more information about Gareth Brooks and information about other books by him, check out the Living the Lion video. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.